Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another Rotato Danger 5 class guide. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we're covering the Druid, which is a character that breaks the game every time you play it. Seriously, there's no such thing as a good run with this character. Either you lose and have a bad run, or you have the most ridiculous run of all time because of how much this character's stats snowball. How it works is you get bonus luck and bonus chance of generating consumables, and every time you pick up a consumable, you have a chance of increasing your luck, which then gives you more consumables. In exchange for that, you can't use normal healing, so you're reliant on consumable healing, and one third of uh, fruits that you generate are cursed and will hurt you instead of healing you, so you have to be very careful. I think there are basically two ways to build this character. You can either use pruners to generate the most consumables possible and try to farm up as much luck as possible, or you can take advantage of the luck that you're going to be generating using a weapon that scales off of luck. I have found that the most reliable way to win with this character is with the loot. This uh, weapon scales off of luck, so it takes a ton of advantage of the character's strengths while also giving you two of the most powerful um, weapon tags in the game with the musical and heart and support weapon tag and not sacrificing damage for them because of the incredible uh scaling that you get off of luck also note there that we got one luck off the first red fruit that i stepped on so we actually have 16 luck uh i didn't mention it at the time but something that you do want to do on this character is deliberately step on the poison fruits as long as you're not putting yourself in danger because you have a chance of getting luck off them Unlike other characters that scale off consumable pickup, the druid doesn't need to be at full health to get the benefit, so you can get luck off the red fruits as well. We'll take five harvesting here. Obviously, getting early harvesting going is always good, and then we'll lock this tree, and we're going to roll for more loots. Pick one up, lock a gentle alien, roll, roll again. Unfortunately, missed on... Now, we don't have the possibility of getting four on the first wave, but we should still be able to, hopefully, get three and lock a fourth, which is good enough here. And then go to the next wave. Loot also does more damage each time you hit an enemy with it. Uh, you can see the stacking debuff appearing on these Mantis Shrimp. Um, and that, of course, is very powerful when you're fighting loot aliens, when you're fighting elites and bosses. Anything that you need to do high single target damage to, the loot is actually a pretty good weapon at killing. So that helps because this character's main struggle is its lack of reliable healing, which can put you behind against elites and bosses, but the loot helps deal with that as well. Take five harvesting here, and then because it's a level two up upgrade, I'm going to take 10% attack speed. Normally in these first couple waves, I just want luck and harvesting on this character, but uh, attack speed is really important for the loot. So we're going to go ahead and grab it and then buy and buy. We won't be able to buy another loot. Um, so I have a choice. I can either buy the tree and do one reroll. Hope we roll into another loot right away to lock. Or I can re-roll and uh, then we'll still have money to roll again if we want to lock our last loot. I'm going to re-roll first because I really think it's important that we find and lock another loot. Um, which we needed all of that money for, so good thing that I did that. In the early waves, in, in the first two shops, you're guaranteed to see two weapons in the shops. So you want to roll to get your weapon set online as soon as possible. And that's especially true with a weapon like this that has these huge economy boosts just for having six of them in your inventory. So really important to get at your sixth loot as quickly as you can. This weapon also levels extremely well. So rolling aggressively for more copies of it helps level it up. Um, and it gets wildly more powerful as you level it up. So it's nice to do that as well. Reroll here, and we'll take eight harvesting. That's great. And then now we've got our full weapon set online, the six musical and six support weapons. So we're getting 25 luck and 25 harvesting. Buy both of these and roll. And I'll take the bag over the leveled up loot, but both are going to be excellent. I just am hoping that we can get this, uh, this to trigger and give me 15 materials. Ugly Tooth, I actually think is not worth... Uh, locking on this character anymore. This item was nerfed significantly. It does reduce enemy movement speed, but on the Abyss, I have found that you really just want raw stats to fight the elites and bosses, so I'm much less interested in Ugly Tooth, especially on melee characters, uh, than I used to be. Another 
type of item that we're really looking out for is any way to heal that doesn't involve having to pick up consumables, um, which of course we do want to do, uh, but also doesn't involve lifesteal or regeneration, which we can't easily use. So things like Cute Monkey or Tentacle are extremely valuable for this character. Unfortunately, I, I was indecisive there. I had to like decide whether to go for the tree or the curse alien, and I changed my mind in the middle, meaning I got neither. Um, obviously a misplay there. We should have got the second curse alien or the tree. Um, unfortunate that I just uh, messed that up in the moment. Here you can see that the red fruits are not pulled to my character, so if I had stepped on that, it would have been worth a third of a luck. Uh, so a mistake not to step on that as well. We'll take the coupon though, awesome to grab that. And we'll take some bonus armor. Any armor we can get is critically important on the abyss, so we want to grab that early. And then more luck is more stats for us and more damage. As we level the loot, it gains a ton of base damage. You can see it goes from 9 to 16 because the scaling off of luck increases. So this weapon scales extremely well with levels, and it's very important to grab that. Another bag is amazing. Broken Mouth also very good. And we will lock another Gentle Alien. Uh, more of these, of course, mean more fruits because more enemies to generate consumables means more consumables. Um, so at the moment, the things that I'm looking for right now are higher weapon levels. Weapon levels are really important to this character, so we do want to increase those. Um, lumberjack shirt would be really nice. Something that this character can struggle with is that trees are immune to the debuff from the loot, so we don't deal extra damage to them per subsequent hit. So uh, lumberjack shirt can help kill trees much, much faster. And just increases to our luck as well. Other forms of healing, more armor and dodge, all the usual things that you would normally want on a character. Roll here. Um, I'm just going to take the four melee damage. Our weapon only scales with 50% of our melee damage, but this can help uh, while we're building up our luck. This can help make sure that our damage is keeping up in the early game. And similarly, we'll grab some attack speed. Dental Alien is great. Uh, crit chance, not super important on this character because the loot only scales at 1.5 times critical. You can use it to trigger tentacle if you find tentacle, so it's not totally useless to buy, but generally you don't need to buy a lot of crit chance. Take the loot and injection and alien tongue. Pickup radius, obviously good, but we're relying on consumables for our healing. And then we will take a lemonade as well. The gentle aliens are also nice because they gave me a little bit of HP, which this character does want high max HP. Um, since the red fruits hurt us, we want the max HP to survive picking those up. And still making pretty good money this wave, and we're getting a decent amount of bonus luck by stepping on the fruits. Um, even if you're at full health, it can often be worth it to step on the consumables because uh, then you'll have potentially more luck for later in the wave, which can generate more consumables. Now, though, I do need to be a little bit careful. I took a few extra hits there. I don't think we'll be able to kill that loot alien, so I'm not going to go for it. Unfortunate it spawned so late, but what can you do? Uh, we'll take the alien eyes here. A little bit of extra damage never hurt anybody, and it only recycles for 20. And let's take the level 3 dodge. Um, I would prefer max HP to dodge at this point, but dodge is not is something we will want eventually, and it's a level 3 upgrade. We'll buy this. Um, we've already got some increased pickup radius. I think I'm going to pass on the second alien tongue. One is enough to make my healing a little more reliable, so we're just going to pass on it. This character wants to build into damage and defense more, so you do in these early waves, want to avoid luxury items like Alien Tongue in favor of things that just make you harder to kill or do more damage. We found also an incredibly powerful item for this character, the Baby Elephant. Anything that does damage based off luck is going to be great for us when, when our luck is going to continuously increase. So the Baby Elephant is going to be great. Sunken Bell, I think we can pass on. We don't really need it. Um, incendiary turret we're also going to pass on. I will reroll once just to see if we can lock something good, and I'll take the Cyclops Worm and the Dangerous Bunny. Repost, if we had more dodge or more melee damage, might be worth it, but at this point I think it's not. 
So you can see we've got damage from the baby elephant uh, starting to trigger as we pick up materials. More of those and cyber balls would be incredible for our wave clear as well. And uh, the walrus, we should be able to kill reasonably quickly because our loots stack a debuff on it that makes it take additional damage. So we were able to clear that walrus before it did too much damage to us. I'm going to step on that red fruit because we've got enough HP to support doing that, although then I tanked a hit. Um, another thing that you need to think about on this character is you probably are in the habit of running over trees as you kill them to get the healing immediately. I mean, I certainly am in that habit. Um, this character does not want to do that because if you run directly over the tree to pick up the consumable as quickly as possible, it might be a poisoned one and hurt you. Cauldron, excellent, obviously. Pickup radius is good for us. We don't care about losing the regen and the extra damage is awesome since we're going to be picking up a lot of consumables. And Baby Gecko combines super well with baby elephant, so we're very happy to see that. I could take 12% damage here. I could also roll for luck or harvesting, but I think just taking the percent damage is good. Shady Potion is awesome. That boosts our luck, and then we'll buy these items and roll. Another leveled loot is great. We'll grab that. Medical turret is also amazing. Like I said, this character is on the lookout always for things that heal you without being consumables, so the medical turret is super helpful as well. Cyberball, again, going to help us kill enemies really quickly. Um, a turret, a cursed turret. Honestly, I think I will grab this. The actual damage that it does is not going to be that high. But for 30, there's a couple... Um, 30, just buying one curse isn't terrible. And it can help me clear enemies, especially in combination with the Cyberball and Baby Elephant. A couple more items that just spread damage around the map are pretty nice to have. At this point, we do want to stop picking up too many consumables because we might need the healing. So we're going to leave um, at least some on the ground so that we can heal up, but still probably pick up the red ones as long as we've got full health. So unless I start tanking a lot of hits, we can continuously try to generate more luck for ourselves. The... The goal with this character, of course, is to snowball. We want to get off to a really strong start with our economy and then have our economy just power us through the end game with ridiculous stats, and we're well on our way to doing that. Here, I will take 6% damage. Percent damage is good. Obviously, the lifesteal doesn't matter, but 27 for 6% damage is fine. We do need some move speed, so I'll just grab that. And then let's roll here. We can definitely get a level 2 upgrade because we have 80 luck, um, and we'll take a little more move speed. Now our speed should be enough to help us dodge this elite. Basically, what I'm worried about is making sure that we have the damage to kill the elite uh, before we take too much damage. With our relatively uh, unreliable healing on this character, you need to be able to kill um, elites quickly, so that's part of what makes loot such a good weapon for us. A uh, cute monkey, another great way to heal up, so we're very happy with that. Frozen heart, this is basically buying 0.8 damage, base damage on our weapons. Um, I don't think that's worth 160, so I'm going to pass on it. I'm gonna roll here. Jerky is going to be awesome. Um, which which of these do I want? I, I'm going to avoid blood donation on this character with unreliable healing. Although blood donation is powerful and we could probably support it, uh, I think this is an item you should usually avoid because it is a way that you can lose on this character is buying items like this, so we're going to pass on it. What I'm not sure is whether the Gentle Alien will be worth more or the Dangerous Bunny, um, and we can't buy both. So I think I'm going to buy the Gentle Alien and then lock these two. I think that will be worth more materials than the free reroll because it can also generate bonus luck for us as well, just having more enemies on the field. And we got a second spawner there. Uh, normally only one of those spawns at the start of the wave, but because of our increased enemy spawn rate, we got a second one. And those guys drop, I think, six materials when you kill them, so already that gentle alien has paid off. Um, you can see how much luck we're now generating as we pick up these consumables, and of course we have the cyberball and baby elephant helping us clear the wave. The baby gecko pulling in the materials to clear the wave even faster. 
Um, so enemies are just dying as soon as they spawn. And this is exactly what you want to be happening on this character. Bonk the high health enemies and debuff them so that our damage kills them even sooner. And our medical turret and uh, cute monkey doing a great job keeping us alive. And you can see we're already making 600 materials in a wave. Things are going very well. Now I'll take the ugly tooth. I didn't want to lock it early, but uh, we can pick it up. Sharp bullet. Minus 5% damage. It is good for our um, our engineering, our turrets and stuff, but I'm going to recycle it here. Just minus 5% damage isn't good, and I don't think it's going to matter that much. Uh, another little frog. Or do we have one of those already? I can't remember. Um, no, we didn't pick one up yet. Um, but the little frog, it, of course, is good. Pickup radius is good for us. Take three armor here and another baby elephant. Awesome. We will grab this, this, and the jerky. Plus three HP from consumables is incredible. Now, jerky does have a bit of a negative interaction with the druid because it makes the healing consumables heal you over time. The damaging ones still do their damage all at once. So you can get in a little trouble doing that. Um, or due to that, but uh, killing you over time is actually an advantage in a lot of ways on the jerky healing, and um, the plus three consumable healing just makes our healing wildly better. So really, really good item to find here. I will take the bowler hat as well. Uh, I do want to boost my engineering by two back to zero, because then our medical turret will heal us for three. Um, but I'm not, not enough to buy an item specifically for it. I'm going to re-roll past all of this. Uh, I will take the treasure map and the lemonade, of course, and then roll again. And we will grab a metal detector. I, oh, actually, I should have picked up the fish hook and locked these other items. That, that I didn't notice the fish hook over here. Um, but obviously, buying the fish hook and locking the other items would have been the way to go, because then we could have got them cursed. You can see there we take 8 damage right away when we pick up the red fruit and heal slowly when we pick up the, the green ones. Um, but the healing over time is, is in a lot of ways on the jerky an advantage because it means you can pick up uh, fruits at full health or close to full health and still benefit from the healing if you then subsequently take damage. It also means for this character it doesn't matter whether like what order you pick up the consumables in. So if we have two spawn on top of each other like this, one's red and one's green, normally on this character, we would maybe pull in the green one if we'd already taken a little bit of damage, and then we'd have to, uh, and then we'd heal back up to full health and then be hurt after we picked up the red one. With the jerky, we can pick up both at the same time and heal back up the damage regardless of the order we pick them up in. So there's a lot of advantages to the jerky on this character. Uh, bag, of course. A third bag we will definitely take. And then let's reroll here. I really want more dodge and I want more attack speed. Those are the stats I'm looking for the most. I'm gonna roll again. We can definitely get a higher level upgrade. Wow, we are uh, not getting lucky on those. I'll take the five luck, though. And then we'll take three more armor. Another baby elephant. This is We're definitely running over average on the baby elephant, but I will take that pretty happily. And then let's buy all of these. This makes our max HP high enough that we can survive a couple hits from the elite, which is nice. Keep leveling our loot. The level three loot scales at 20% uh, of our luck and debuffs the enemy up to 70% bonus damage, which is huge for killing bosses faster. Take the propeller hat. Um, Tyler, compass. I, I'm going to take the compass. We want move speed. And this will put my engineering back positive for our medical turret. Peaceful B. We don't really care about reducing our melee damage and we will want dodge. Of course, the harvesting isn't that relevant at this point, but still not terrible. One more wave until our first elite, so we're hoping to get strong enough to kill it very quickly. This character does want to kill elites very fast, because our healing is not super reliable, so we need to get our damage high enough that we can just obliterate the elite, um, rather than have to like worry about dodging its attacks. Luckily, thanks to our incredibly powerful economy, we should be able to do that. Gonna have a drink here.
the goblin sharks. These guys are probably the most damage or dangerous enemy for a loot build because stacking damage up on them is pretty difficult. They they charge past you, and you need to hit enemies several times with your loot to get the the damage bonus active on them. Um, since they charge past, it's harder for us to do that. We'll recycle the eye surgery. Pearl, another amazing item for this character. As we're building tons and tons of luck, this is going to be worth tons and tons of percentage damage. Uh, so this is a character where Pearl is awesome. And then we'll take bonus attack speed. Attack speed is really good going into these elite fights because the faster we stack up the debuff from the loot, the faster we kill the elite. Is it too late to take a scar? We have no bonus XP gain. Um, honestly, I don't think it is. This is going to be worth a couple levels, probably. We'll take a blindfold and a mouse as well. Uh, I will take a weird food and a treasure map. Mirror is an item that I am generally not that impressed with. For 130, I think there's usually better things we can get. But I'll lock it for a wave and maybe we can roll into something awesome. We do have a fish hook, so if we get something cursed, we can duplicate it with the mirror. Take bonus damage, and we'll take a free reroll. See if we can get a cool item locked. Uh, I guess I will lock all of these. I mean, we might, if we get like the coffee cursed, we'll probably spend 130 on a, a second cursed coffee with the mirror. And uh, let's go fight the elite. Elite spawns over here. This is probably one of the easier elites for us to fight with the loot because. It's easy to stack the debuff on it. It just uh, goes to the center of the arena and sits there. And as long as you move in circles around it, you can dodge its attacks pretty reliably. Um, as long as you're not bad like I am. I did dodge that, that guy's attacks pretty badly. But as you can see, because our damage is so high, we're able to just kill it very quickly before we have to worry about healing through the incoming damage. Get a couple more curse alien kills. I'd love to get more baby geckos to pull in materials as they spawn, um, especially because we have the, the elephants and cyberballs, so the more we trigger those, the, the faster we clear the wave. Uh, or Sith's Relic, of course, would be great as well. I'm going to run over here and pick up that one red fruit. Uh, very happy to pick up two armor, and hey... <laughs> Well, I guess ask and ye shall receive. We got the Sifts Relic for three armor, and we're going to pull in materials. Don't care about the eye surgery, but I'll take 10% more attack speed and 12 dodge. Again, this is one of the advantages of playing the, the Druid, is that your luck is going to start stacking immensely, meaning you're going to find super high level items. All right, um, we got the Cursed Mirror, which... Uh, okay, so... Duplicates the next item you get from the shop. Minus 18% item. I've never seen a cursed mirror before, actually. So it basically makes the next item cheaper. Uh, and we lose the curse. That's too bad that we lose the curse. Um, but I guess I will duplicate a cyberball because a second cyberball is going to be awesome. So we're going to buy the mirror, buy two cyberballs, and then we, yeah, we don't get a... We, we lose four curse off that. That's a little disappointing, but two cyberballs was worth it. So the mirror was not bad there. We basically bought an expensive cyberball, um, which is fine. This character will spend a premium on a cyberball. Buy another loot here and roll. We will take another cute monkey. Incredible for healing for this character. We do really still want to upgrade our weapons, so we do not want to buy the knot here. And this is exactly why. We want all of these items. We'll take another loot and another baby elephant. Lock a metal detector because a cursed one would be great. I also, it's possible I should leave a loot locked because getting one cursed would be incredible. And we do have a fish hook. But we have three items that we can lock here for potential fish hook val value. So not bad at all either. Killing those lampreys there. And now we've got enough baby elephants that we're just killing everything as it spawns, too. The double cyberball there really snowballed us ahead. So, you know, I I uh, was down on the mirror, but in this case, it was quite good. Because we happen to roll into an item that's a premium for this character. 
I love seeing the enemies spawn and then just immediately pop. Which is very funny. And you can see, because we have the cute monkey, as we pick up the, the cursed fruit, um, we heal immediately because we're, like, pulling in the, uh, the materials. Um, I'll buy the cake there, and I will take the feather. We definitely want to build dodge before we fight the next elite. And when it shows up free in a box, maybe I take frozen heart. Um... It is worth 125 because we have a recycling machine. So I think for 125, this still probably isn't worth it. Um, but it is just a cool item. So I'm just going to grab it anyways, just for fun. Take nine dodge here. Uh, immediately punished also because I forgot I had this lost duck locked in the shop. So the, the frozen heart immediately costing me uh, benefits of this lost duck. Let's buy all of these. Scaling our percent damage off of knockback isn't bad. We can buy knockback with the coil. And then it's not too late for Vigilante Ring to be good. We'll buy a cute monkey. We'll keep rolling. We'll buy another loot and just keep leveling those up and keep rolling. Get all these free rerolls too. Locking all of these items because anything that we can curse, we will be very happy with. So we have four items locked in the shop for a potential fish hook curse. And... This character, as you can see, just becomes incredible as you continue to level up. Also worth noting there, um, as you can see from picking up the, the red fruit, I've gotten this question a couple times, but you don't get the healing over time from Jerky with the, the red fruits. They really do just do damage to you. Otherwise, Jerky would be even better than it already is for this character. And uh, it's my opinion that that is the single best item in the expansion, Jerky, and may actually now be the single best item in the game. It's it's like pretty close to on par with the uh, with like fairy for healing. It's actually in, in some ways better than fairy for healing, especially after the nerf. Um, and it's a level two item. So. I think Jerky may be uh, the actual number one item in Brotato right now. Uh, it's like that or bag, basically. I'm going to recycle the fuel tank and buy more luck for more damage. Cursed Pearl, that's going to increase our chance of finding more pearls, which is amazing. We will buy all of these items. I'm still going to buy the Mastery here. Just uh, six damage off, off the Mastery is still worth scaling my weapon damage with, I think. And then we don't have a Lumberjack shirt, right? We don't, but I think I might grab Pocket Factory anyways. But what I'm going to do is buy the propeller hat, buy the sunglasses, because uh, now we can start building crit damage. That's totally fine. And lock the Pocket Factory. I'm going to hope we get that cursed, because that would be a huge benefit to our character. Uh, keep rolling. Lock this loot. We could get a cursed loot. We could get a cursed Lucky Charm and another chance at a cursed loot. So we're going to leave a couple items locked in the shop couple weapons locked in the shop for our fish hook and see if we can get some cursed loots going because those are incredibly powerful the luck damage scaling is increased and also the maximum debuff gets increased so you deal even more damage to enemies as you stack up the debuff still picking up the red fruits because now our healing with the all the cute monkeys we have and with Sif's relic our healing is actually very reliable so we can pick up the red fruits and get a third of a uh, luck every time on average obviously you do want to avoid triangle of power on this character and you want to avoid crystal because when you step on a red fruit that does count as your character taking damage so, Triangle of Power, you're going to take hits um, when you're playing this character, which will decrease your damage. So, uh, definitely an item to avoid on the Druid. You see there, we're just deliberately taking damage constantly, and we made 1,300 materials on the Horde Wave. Propeller Hat, yes. Corrupted Shard, yes. Toxic Sludge, we don't need. Oh, maybe I should have taken that because we had the Frozen Heart. Spicy sauce, that's going to be a ton of damage. We make a lot of fruits, so more damage, more dodge, and more damage. 
Um, we don't have any way to set enemies on fire currently, but if we get a uh, an incendiary turret or a uh, scared sausage, the Greek fire will be good. So I'm going to pick it up on spec. If we weren't so far ahead, you know, if our character weren't so ridiculously powerful at this point, I would recycle that, but I'm just going to grab it just for fun here. Um, nothing got cursed, unfortunately, but I don't think we can afford to just wait around for our fish hook to start doing stuff. Oh, hey, it's got a pity bonus listed now. That's kind of cool. 20% pity bonus on the fish hook. Uh, so I'm going to upgrade. I might leave the level four loot and just see if we can get that cursed. Um, but I'm going to buy a bunch of other weapons and items because um, I don't want to spend. I don't want to just wait around and not spend 1300 materials. Buy all of these. Bean teacher, we've got 17 XP gain. So this is probably worth one level. I don't think that's worth it. There's the scared sausage, which will make our Greek fire good. So I'm going to grab that. And this, and we'll lock a metal detector as well. Do a reroll and see if we can lock anything else. Um, I guess we'll lock the cursed scared sausage, not for the fish hook, but just for the item. And go to the next wave. Just took a quick break there to rest my voice, and then we are on to wave 16. Killing these enemies with a single swing, very satisfying, of course. <laughs> Making sure to break these trees. Um, because we don't have Lumberjack shirt, we uh, can't rely on like our turrets and stuff to break trees for us. We do have to do it ourselves. But luckily, we can still generate a lot of turrets around the map by doing that. It's possible I should have kept the Pocket Factory locked also to try to get it cursed, but... Um, basically, it just adds a tree when you get a cursed pocket factory. It's it's pocket factory plus tree, the item. Um, which is good, obviously, but not, I think, worth giving up a shop slot to try to get. There's my favorite band, Cursed Walrus, but unfortunately, they had to go. Uh, we will take the snowball here, so... This can give us a little bit of elemental damage and is also just fun to pick up unique items. We'll take this. Incendiary turret is great for lighting enemies on fire for our Greek fire. The incendiary turret fire does work for Greek Greek fire. Then bonus attack speed. And we got a cursed loot. And you can see um, this cursed loot damage, the damage bonus maxes out at 150%. I've seen this go as high as 190%. I don't know if it can go up to 200, but cursed weapons do have slightly randomized stats. Um, but this is obviously a massive increase to the amount of damage that you do to enemies as you stack up the debuff on them. We will combine the loot and buy this one. Uh, continue to buy Scared Sausage because of the Greek fire damage and the metal detector we will buy as well. I don't want to decrease my luck, even by 8, so we're not buying that. Let's keep leveling up our weapons. Another gecko doesn't do anything because we have Sift's Relic. I will buy another medical turret just for safety. Um, I'm not that worried at this point in the game, of course, but the medical turret just gives us a little bit of extra reliable healing, which is nice. I'm going to take a bait even going into the elite wave, and I'll take wings as well for bonus move speed, roll, and we're going to try to leave... Um, Couple items locked, and see if we can get anything cool cursed. Alright, with our cursed level 4 loot, I think we will kill this elite very quickly. And, uh, turns out, I was right. And this is what I'm talking about with this character. Um, if a run goes well at all, it will be just the most ridiculous run of all time. No matter what happens with this character, like, if you're winning, you're winning by a lot which I think is a very fun uh, character to play. Getting to that point can be a little bit difficult, and that's why I think playing the, the loot version of the character helps, because uh, it means that you don't have to buy damage or anything like that. Um, but once you do get there, the sheer amount of bonus stats that you're getting make this character the absolute best character in the game, I think, at wave 20. I think there's... There's no other character in the game that is, on average, stronger at wave 20 than the druid. Um, 
yeah, I'll take this. Losing pickup range, definitely painful, but the elemental damage and melee damage both do scale our weapon, and we'll take the cake as well. Scar, we don't need. Goblet, this is another great way to heal on this character. It gives you just another source of non-regen, uh, non-lifesteal healing. We'll take that as well. And 16% more damage. Did get an item cursed, which is nice. And 6 dodge gets us almost to dodge cap, which is good. Buy all of these. And then we'll buy a little bit more dodge. I do want to hit dodge cap before the end of the run. If we'd found this extra stomach earlier, it would have been awesome. As is, I think we're going to pass on it. I'll buy the mirror, though, in case we get something really cool. Yeah, I'll mirror a lure for sure, especially if we get a, a cursed one. Um, minus one armor at the end of the wave. Well, that won't really matter. We'll lose one armor. Actually, I'm just going to lock this entire shop. Uh, oh, not the scars. We'll, we'll roll here. I don't want to buy this cursed boxing glove because it would use my mirror. Um, I'm going to roll again and see if I can lock something better. Will I buy the wings if it gets cursed? Yeah, I sure will. So I'm going to lock everything in that shop and see what gets cursed. Then we'll ch basically just choose what to duplicate with the mirror based on um, what gets cursed, probably. Or we'll just duplicate lure because I like having more loot aliens on the field and more loot is more good. Enemies just don't even have time to, like, get onto the field, really. They just die as soon as they spawn with all of our baby elephants and cyberballs. And our weapons hit for 800. Tanking that damage there, and... Continuing to look for red fruits on the ground to pick up manually. That's like one of the only things I need to really pay any attention to at this point. And by need, I mean definitely don't need to, but want to, because I want to get uh, to even more luck if possible. I'll take this and we'll recycle that. I will uh, recycle that. We will take this actually because we have the spicy sauce, which can be a lot of damage. So I'm willing to pick that up, recycle all of these, and I'll take 12 dodge just to get us over dodge cap. Okay, so the spicy sauce got cursed. I'm going to take this because I think this will be really fun having two cursed ones of these for a tremendous amount of bonus damage. And then we'll just buy this, this, and sure, we'll buy that as well. Uh, cursed ice cube, that's great because all our attacks do elemental damage, so that's going to be awesome for us. And keep on rolling. Clockwork Wasp. We'd never found a garden, right? But we do have a pocket factory. I don't think that's good enough to take the Clockwork Wasp for by itself, though. And here, I could lock this loot. Uh, the likelihood of us getting it cursed, though, is only 20%, so I'm just gonna buy it. Um, just to keep leveling up my weapons and make sure that we've got as much damage as possible. Taking 11 damage every time we step on a red fruit, but obviously that is not a problem. More explosion size would be fun given that we have the spicy sauce. I do need to be a little bit careful. Like there I walked on five red fruits in a row and that was just 50 unblockable damage. So, um... The, the way that we lose this run is if I just step onto 10 red fruits and die immediately. Because uh, our healing now is excellent at this point. So we're, we're healing everything back up right away. Um, but I could still just nuke myself into oblivion by stepping on infinite poisoned consumables. At this point, we're really, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel for possible ways to lose. I'll take the these items, and um, we're going to recycle the knot. I, I just, this is probably correct to take, but I really dislike this item. It's just not fun. Take that. Uh, fish hook won't do anything. The pearl, this is a normal pearl, not a bonus pearl. We actually have gotten zero bonus pearls, but we'll, we'll buy it anyways. Um, we'll recycle the Tyler, and I just like going fast. We'll take that. Rip and tear, that's nice. And hey, we got a bonus pearl. So again, just complain about it and it'll happen. Take two armor here and 20 luck. 
And then a cursed bowler hat. Why not? Keep on rolling. Looking for items that will just help us kill the bosses even faster. Uh, obviously, the, the cursed coupon there is not a particularly good purchase. But um, at this point, it's kind of academic what we buy. I'm just buying fun stuff mostly. I will take the 10% attack speed and minus 6% damage. Our damage is huge, and attack speed is one of the stats that helps us actually kill enemies faster. Uh, and now I'll take the crystal going into the boss wave. This can help us kill the bosses quicker. Take bonus crit chance, bonus damage. Sure, we'll take the scared sausage. Why not? I'll take the adrenaline as well. That's a bunch of extra healing and the bonus damage from the Cyclops Worm. This level 4 loot would obviously have been really nice, but we didn't have the money for it. Maybe I could have sold one of my lower level weapons for it. Um, but I think this bonus damage was better anyways. And then let's see how long these bosses last. I'm going to predict fewer than 10 seconds. Almost got them in under 5 seconds, actually. Um, and there you go. That is the druid. And that's why I say this character just fully breaks the game every time you play it. Because look at how ridiculous that damage was. Looking at our stats here. Obviously, we did get pretty lucky to get 3 bags in this run. And one of them so early. 4 gentle aliens was really nice as well. Dangerous bunnies were worth a lot, though actually not as much as I would have thought, uh, given that we got them early and rerolled a lot. Cyberballs dealt 210,000 damage, and baby elephants 250,000 damage, so truly ridiculous damage output. Jerky, incredible. Um, the treasure maps gave us 13 extra uh, crate, extra items, which is ludicrous as well. Only 472 off the three metal detectors, so they slightly underperformed. Um, all of the pearls that we got were awesome. The recycling machine was worth 500, so yeah. All our economy items did a tremendous amount of uh, work. The Greek fire did nothing because we just killed the bosses so fast that it didn't matter. Uh, but it was still just kind of fun to have another way to kill them. Similarly, these cursed spicy sauces didn't do anything either. Um, but again, they were just kind of fun. All right, my friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this run and this look at the Druid. I hope it helps you get a win on Danger 5 if you're looking for that. Uh, and also, I just think this is one of the most fun and most broken characters in the game. So if you're looking for just some sheer nonsense, the Druid will definitely deliver. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a comment and hit like. Helps me out with the algorithm, so I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And of course, you can subscribe to my channel for more Brotato class guides and other strategy game analysis. Cheers, folks. I'll catch you next time.